Hey everybody, it's Charles, your hobby hero, and today we've got another CGC comic unboxing. This is a 27 book pre-screen that has been unpressed. Before we jump in though, make sure if you haven't already, hit that subscribe button down in the bottom corner. I do appreciate it. Put out regular content about the hobbies. I love the most. Uh, so real quick, if you don't know what a pre-screen is, if you are submitting to CGC um, at least 25 books or more, you can set a minimum grade requirement uh, saying basically if it does not meet this grade in the pre-screen, do not grade it and they will send it back to you without uh, putting it in an actual slab. Um, and you might be asking why you want to do this. Right now to do a full graded comic book is approximately $22 before discounts and the reject fee is only $8 before discount. So if there's a certain grade that you really have to hit to be profitable on the slab, it saves you from spending the extra $14 um, to, to put it in there, especially if there's something on the book that can be corrected and then resubmitted and then potentially get that higher grade. You're gonna run into this a lot with modern books uh, as modern books generally are only really worth the higher premium if they're in that 9.8 and a very small defect that you miss could drop it down to a 9.6 and keep you from having to s s crack that slab open, fix that defect and then resubmit it all together. So uh, out of the 26 or 27 books today, we had four rejects only, so another pretty uh, good success rate. A number of these are the Walmart uh, three-pack exclusives. Um, so to get those in a 9.8 without a press is pretty impressive. Uh, I've said it before, I'll say it again, this is our era's version of the newsstand. These books get put on a Walmart shelf. They're not packaged or shipped particularly carefully to begin with. And then once they get up there, people are flipping through them, letting stuff lay on top of them. So to get them undamaged without a press uh, is impressive in and of itself. So we'll go ahead and jump in. We'll take a look at the first, uh, the graded books, and then we'll take a look at the rejects at the very end to see if I think there's a potential for them to get pressed and resubmitted and possibly get that 9.8. Okay, first we get our reject box out of the way very small very light always good and then in no particular order these will all be 9.8 so I'm not gonna hide the grade or anything from you guys on that uh, first one up is the planet of the apes planet of the apes planet of the symbiotes number one the Walmart exclusive on the back there and I can already see some waves on that one there, but it got the 9.8. Uh, so you can get in that light there. So there are some imperfections that'll get in there. That one's actually a pretty wavy front cover, but again, 9.8. Uh, there are some allowable defects in that 9.8. This cover with all the black and reds on the front, very hard uh, to get a 9.8. A lot of them I did not even submit, and several of the ones I have sent in um, thinking I could get a 9.8 have already actually been returned rejected. Uh, so you have to be careful with those. Uh, we've got a, another in the 9.8. Another in the 9.8. And you're like, hey, I thought these were hard to get in 9.8s. Um, I probably got 20 of this cover because I just absolutely love that cover. Um, I think out of the 20 less than half um, were were 9.8s. Um, so a lot of them, like I said, did not even send. So I've probably got a pile of six or seven of them that just did not have pressable defects, color breaking, spine ticks, stuff like that. So, um, and then a number of them, like I said, just didn't pass. Um, if you haven't seen the first submission, the one I actually sent to get pressed, um, there were four or five of them that got press it still just didn't even go through uh, next one up is Star Wars High Republic number one very big on this one as you can see still waves uh, in that so if you you're ever thinking that your book has to be in perfect condition to get a 9.8 that's not necessarily there are some allowable defects uh, there's some good videos out there on what does get through uh, in a 9.8 um, these books are Honestly, wavier than I would have thought, so I don't know if they got some humidity on them after um, the grading process to kind of make them crinkle, but they're 
pretty wavy for, for 9.8s, but this book in particular, very high on. Um, like I said, the story uh, has been going well. This particular cover I really enjoy. It's got Yoda on the front of it. Um, and I, said, I think it's only a matter of time before we see High Republic in a Disney Plus uh, setting. Um, and this will be the book everybody's flocking to get because of the number of first appearances that are in this book. So we got one of those. Got another one of those. Another and a nine eight. Okay, here we've got Radiant Black, number one. Um, so this book um, has been out for a while now. Uh, I definitely was not aware of it until it hit the shelves. Um, definitely a kind of mix of Power Rangers type stuff and Invincible type stuff. Uh, this, we're seven issues in now, I think, and it's definitely had its ups and downs throughout the series, uh, but this book is definitely holding value already, um, and I do think that the licensing for something similar to this, especially with the success of uh, Invincible, is not a very long shot, because um, basically it's taken two successful properties, uh, Power Rangers and Invincible, and kind of merged them into one. Um, so I could definitely see something like this coming to the big screen. Um, but either way, this one's for my personal collection, uh, except just the cover A uh, for Radiant Black number one. Uh, we've got some more High Republic. I really don't know why they are getting out of order. They're usually pretty good at keeping them in the order that they were on the invoice. Uh, another High Republic number one. Um, if you're not familiar with the Walmart exclusives and why um, I would consider those the newsstand versions, um, you have a lot of people, and you may have seen it, where they're chasing newsstand versions of older books. One, the print run on them was lower uh, for a lot of the more modern books. Anything after like the 1990s, the newsstands really started to diminish as more and more comic books started opening up. Uh, most people were getting their books from the comic book shops and getting direct editions, um, which made places like Barnes and Nobles, um, you know, your CVSs, stuff like that that was that were carrying those newsstands just reduced and reduced and reduced and eventually got rid of all together. So one, they were rarer um, in that sense, but they are also harder to get in high grades uh, because they, they weren't handled with the same level of care that your comic book shop owners would have. If they've got 300 first prints of Amazing Spider-Man number 300, they knew that it was a big issue and they were taking care of it. The people at the newsstand just toss them up there. Little kids would come in, flip through them. Um, you know, they'd get magazines put in front of them and back of them and just get destroyed. So very similar to these box store exclusives like Walmart's where these are covers and a lot of them are exclusive to the covers that come in there um, but they're also just harder to keep in good shape so you know 20 or 30 years from now you know you have somebody who wants that Star Wars High Republic number one you know they're gonna be substantially more nine-eighths of your regular cover A than this one both due to the number of cover A's that were produced and due to the fact that the cover A's, you could pick them up, look at them, pass on them if they were in bad shape. But these, like I said, just slapped in a three pack and you kind of had to deal with what's there. Each Walmart got like two each. Um, so I'm fortunate that I live in an area that had lots of Walmarts and I was able to pick up a lot of them. Otherwise you're spending 25 or $30 a piece on that book. Uh, next one here. We have some Berserker in the last uh, video. This is the one per store, so that was not in our Berserker video. This is probably my favorite cover. Uh, nope, I take that back. Um, I don't know if it's in here, but if it's not, I'll tell you later what my favorite cover is uh, when we get to it. Um, but this is one of my favorite covers. Um, and this is the, like I said, one per store where it's half colored uh, and half sketch. Um, we got that one in a 9.8 as well. I think I was able to snag three of these uh, from local stores, um, so I was pretty happy about those. 
Uh, next one is, oh, here's another one per store. I don't know if all three of them were in this submission or not. I had one that had a lot of color rub uh, over here on the spine. Uh, I was able to get it pretty well cleaned up. Bug on the back of the case, but it came off. Um, so I don't know if I submitted it with these other two or if it'll be in a future submission. All right, what we got here is the Joker number one. This is the Punchline uh, Matina variant. I saw this cover and I absolutely just loved that cover. Um, I will say this, while I'm not huge on a lot of DC titles, DC's covers have been really, really good. Um, and there's just sometimes I just can't pass them up. Um, this one was one of those particular ones. The fact that it was on Joker number one kind of um, increased my interest in it a little bit, but that individual cover was just awesome. And this one will probably be staying in the PC for a while. Another Star Wars High Republic. Apparently we've got those in three different spots in this order. Another Star Wars High Republic. I'm wondering how many of these I sent. A lot. <laughs> All right, there's another one here. Uh, this is another one of the Walmart variants. Uh, this is the Into the Spider Verse. Now, this is actually the second printing of the Walmart variant. Um, there are a couple where they've done multiple prints um, on this one. So, this has got a number of first appearances. This one's got a little bit of heat behind it with the new Into the Spider Verse movie coming out. Um, there could be some relevant appearances uh, in this one. Um, they don't list uh, all the different variants in this particular book because um, it would just be too many to do. And honestly, none of them are really substantial enough to mention right now. Into the Spider Verse could change that. Um, but for right now, it's just a good looking cover. Um, and again, with that being that Walmart exclusive and a big Spider Man title really hard to go wrong with. All right. Now here's a series that is, well, at least on hiatus right now, uh, but I really enjoyed. I Walk With Monsters. Um, this particular cover, I really just uh, liked the homage cover um, on this one, so I sent it off. Again, this is a book for my PC, it doesn't have a, a substantial amount of value outside of just looking good up on the wall back there um, as something to rotate out. The spine on this one, uh, to be honest, I don't know if it's intentionally weathered for the effect. But looks like there's a whole lot of color up on here that I don't remember sending it in with but it could just be the effect I don't even know if you can see it with through the plastic up there yeah you can see all that white at the top it may just be that the wrap isn't quite lined up the way it's supposed to and that weathered effect was all supposed to be on the front um, but either way it's at a 9.8 now uh, and again just it's a good story uh, first issue and like I said cool homage cover to boot Oh, this is kind of funny. Um, so, talked about uh, in the last one, Batman 106, and how I kept getting it bounced back because it was, for random reasons, I've sent, I think, two copies in so far. Uh, both have been returned as not 9.8 material. Um, one of them looks like it was damaged in the pressing process. Um, and then the other one, I really don't know what was wrong with it. We'll try to resubmit it. But I did get the cover B. Um, of it and this is a gorgeous cover and honestly worth less than the cover a even though it's just this beautiful wraparound cover uh, now the significant of this one's the first uh, actually um, listed as the first appearance of Miracle Molly as in a cameo um, I do feel like if this book goes into you know the the annals of history um, as a really significant character there could be some dispute um, on 106 versus 108 and what's her true first appearance. Um, nothing you know, like a little drama to help boost sales. 
Um, she is in the book in a couple of different panels. You do not see her full body though, but she does talk and she is introduced. Um, so there's an argument that could be made. I, you know, hedge my bets. 108 seems to be a much stronger candidate in my personal opinion. Um, but first appearance for the purists that are out there, I have my 106s as well. All right, we've got another into the Spider Verse second print. We got this one here. It's just a, an awesome cover. Um, this one is the Captain Marvel number one, uh, the Walmart uh, exclusive. This is the second printing of this book as well, um, which I honestly I prefer the second printing on this one. The first printing still has the barcode on the front, um, and I think when you just have artwork that impressive, like it really just needs to be highlighted and featured more so on the book um, and as little as it can be on the front the better and so you just have a very clean back with the barcode at the very bottom again just a great looking cover uh, i picked up a number of these i think i only had one nine eight candidate um, i could be lying you may see another one of these on the channel uh later uh but it's the only one in this order um and I said, I, I'll probably hold on to that one. If I do have any other ones that come back, though, I'll probably put those up for sale. All right, another High Republic. And then we got, there it is. So it was in this order. This is my favorite Berserker cover. Um, I think, honestly, just because it's so uh, unique compared to the other ones. It doesn't have his full body on it. Uh, it's kind of that close up. I have no idea what you would call that weapon that's in his hand. I'm sure it's got a specific name, um, but a very Keanu, Keanu or <laughs> um, esque pose there. Um, so I really like this one. This one will definitely be going up on the wall. I think this is the one in 200 um, or 250. I can't remember which. Uh, one is I'll throw it up on the screen um, to know for sure, but probably my favorite cover out of the whole lot that were released uh, from that. So we've got two more books before we get to the rejects. Uh, if you didn't know this, they do only package them, and I think 25 at a time. Uh, so if you submit more than 25 books, you will get a second package, uh, which is this little one here, which I believe has just the two slabs in it. All right, last two slabs are both the same book. Two more copies of King and Black, Planet of the Apes, not Planet of the Symbiotes, uh, and again, the 9.8s. Uh, and I do believe that is all the Walmart edition ones that I have out right now, but again, could be lying, and you could see more in the very near future. <laughs> all right, now we'll get into our rejects. Uh, if you were just here for the graded books, you can feel free to exit now. We're going to take a look at these books, see if it was stuff that I really obviously should have caught, um, or if possibly I had a grader on a bad day, and we've got a potential to get these back in and get them resubmitted. So again, we have one, two, three, four books uh, that were submitted, and three of the four are Star Wars High Republic books. Uh, and one is Berserker cover A. Uh, now this was not part of my original purchase. Um, I had actually purchased some higher uh, variants from a local shop and asked if part of that price could be to throw in just another copy of the cover A, um, to which they did. And to be honest, this book looks to be in really good shape. Um, there's a little white speck at the bottom here. I thought it was actually printed on it, but now that I look closer at it, I do think it's actually nicked right there at the very bottom. I can see it. So that is not something that's going to press out. Um, so unfortunately, it's really the only thing I see on here. If that was enough to keep it from getting a 9.8, uh, it's not going to be a 9.8. So that'll be a book that has to probably stay raw at this point. Get it back in the bag here. All right, first Star Wars High Republic. 
Um, and like I said, these were ones that I thought could be 9 8 I can tell you right now, it's already got a bunch of waves in it. You see it on there. Now this is stuff that will come out very easily with the press. Um, obviously, as we saw inside those slabs, it's not going to be something that by itself will usually prevent it. This one is pretty wavy though, so if there's something else somewhere else on here, that may have been enough. There is a tad bit of color rub up here. Uh, and that's about it. Maybe a, there's actually a itty bitty spine stress. I don't even know if I can get it on the camera down there at the bottom. Um, so like I said, I think the combination of those three very minor spots probably knocked it out of 9-8 contention. Um, a press and you know a light cleaning on that color rub should come up. And I think we can probably get that one resubmitted for as a 9.8. So that's kind of what we talked about on the pre-screen, something like that, very preventable stuff um, that would be in like a 9.6 slab right now or worse you know, 9.4, 9.2, um, if they consider the defect significant enough. And something that could be fixed very easily and resubmitted. Um, so that's what we're trying to avoid here. So next, High Republic. Again, look at these waves. Like, I, I mean, I feel like I wouldn't have submitted them if they were this wavy. So I'm feeling like they probably did not benefit from wherever they were at during <laughs> shipping and transit. Um, but yeah, very fortunate I guess that as many of them got through with those waves as they did and again it's not significant um, in the sense of like I mean it's something that will be is very easily rectified um, but also not what you want to I'm yeah and then there's just one tiny spine stress doesn't again I don't think I can get it even on the can't screen there but in this bottom corner right over here a little tiny spine stress and I'm guessing, I said, with the combination of that and uh, the waves, it probably just kicked it out. So we'll give that one a press as well, and I think we can get that one in. So, so far, um, I missed, I guess, a spot on the, the Berserker. Um, and really minor stuff on the others. So we got the last reject here. Again, waves all the way across it. Um... No indentations. I don't see any spine stresses on this one. Um, there's maybe. Oh, heck, I don't even know. <laughs> there's a, a little rough spot on the very spine uh, of it up there. And there you go, right there in the middle might be a little over what they'll usually allow in, in that. Like, cause everybody asks why are these books aren't all tens. Just in shipping, the spine rubs a lot, the corners rub a lot, and they usually just accept that any book that's shipped out through mass dis distribution is going to have that stuff, and that's usually what makes everything a 9.8 versus a 10. Um, so maybe that, that little spot right there was a little over the allowable limit, but I really don't see anything else on this one. I think if we press, again, those waves out, we can probably resubmit this one as well. If that's the only imperfection is that little scuff on the spine, it will probably still slide into that 9.8. Uh, so overall, really successful submission. Um, again, the pre-screen only knocked out four books out of the 27, so we have 23 books that are now slabbed and graded. A lot of those books, again, being um, unpressed Walmart uh, variants, which ex or exclusive variants, even at that. Um, so, pretty impressed uh, with that. A lot of that has to do with the fact, though, that I knew when those books were releasing and got there the day that they were put on the shelves. The longer they sit on those shelves, the less likely that they are going to be able to go and get immediately uh, submitted or even pressed and submitted. Um, again, for all the ones that you see here, there's about one or two in the case of the Planet of the Symbiotes, probably two, one and a half to two rejects for every one that I sent in. The Star Wars High Republic, as we saw in this order, we had three rejects and we had, I think, close to ten that 
that came back positive, but there were also some that I just didn't send in because I knew there was no shot of them getting a 9.8 just due to the stuff that's on there. And then take that into consideration, there were a number of them that I just left on the shelf because you could just see how badly damaged they were. So if you have a chance to scoop these things up uh, for a good price, if they're books you care about, like I said, for me personally, like I said, for my personal collection, if there's a version of them that's going to be one of these Walmart variants that I can get in a 9.8, that's where I'm going to go. Um, I like the covers. They're very clean. They're unique um, in that sense as far as you know the trade dress on them. And again, I think uh, you know we all care about the value of our collection. And I think just for holding and maintaining the highest potential um, for value is going for that kind of exclusive newsstand equivalent kind of book that's out there. So my two cents, uh, feel free to leave a comment in the section or comment section below if you think I'm crazy for getting all these Walmart variants slabbed. Uh, feel free to let me know. Uh, if you haven't already, make sure you like and subscribe. And until next time, Hobby Hero, out.